we've all been there. You know, you check the forecast and you rush home from work or you cancel a meet up with your friends and then those clouds roll in and they wreck your whole night and you spend the evening cursing why you ever started doing astronomy. And worse still, it's the third time it's happened this week. Or worse still, it's gut-wrenching and you've actually gone ahead and you've set up for the night thinking this is going to be fabulous. And then the worst thing happens and you wake up to wet gear, thousands of pounds worth of equipment destroyed. What on earth are you going to do? Well, in today's video, I'm going to help you look through some weather apps and I'm going to go through my system out there for making sure that the night is as successful as it can be from a weather point of view. I'm going to go through what I do as a proven system and it's worked for me for loads of years and I've not yet had to experience my gear being destroyed by the weather. And actually, I've had pretty good success as well at predicting those clear nights all the way through, having eight, ten hours of imaging time without the weather really bothering me. Of course, we all get caught with the odd bit of cloud here and there. And we've all had that moment when we do set up and the clouds roll in. So hopefully these apps and this system will help you predict a clear night more often than not. Now, just a quick disclaimer, this video is not going to guarantee clear skies every night, but it is going to give you the best possible chance of getting a clear night uninterrupted when the forecast is saying it's clear. And I'm going to talk about the weather apps that I use and the ones that over years have proven themselves to be completely reliable. I'll also be naming and shaping the one weather app that is absolutely hopeless at nighttime weather predictions and has consistently been <laughs> wrong time and again. Now, in fairness, nighttime weather can be notoriously difficult to predict. And that's because we've got issues like trapped heat and we've also got rapid cooling that comes into play. So it can be really tricky to predict and certainly it's more unpredictable than daytime. So first tip, and it's probably fairly obvious, but never, ever, ever rely on just one forecast. I have a system where I go through three slash four forecasts each time I go out and image, and it's proven to be quite a good system. After all, if I'm leaving my rig outside for seven, eight hours, I want to be absolutely confident that it's not going to end up raining. And the likelihood is sometimes with the best will in the world, you start off doing a night of astronomy and then you fall asleep. It's amazing how many times I look at three or four apps and they wildly disagree on their forecasts for the night. And you'll have one that says it's partially clear and another one saying it's not clear at all. Um, it happens all the time. But I do know that if all three apps are in agreement with each other, then that's the best guarantee of a clear night. I'm going to go through the apps that I use and why I use them and talk to you about some of the features in the hope that it will help you plan your next clear night. Well, let's turn to our first weather app that we're going to look at today on our phones, and that is an app called Clear Outside, and it's been designed by First Light Optics. Um, Slightly comically, we're still on version 1.0 after all these years, so it's never had an update, but it doesn't need to have an update um, because it's a fantastic app. Um, what you'll see within the app is a very helpful um, indicator at the top of your sky quality and your Bortle class. But then it goes, uh, you can see at the top with uh, the solar information so it will tell you when the sun is rising and setting and also very helpfully when it's going to be completely dark you do get absolutely days and days of um, forecasts and you can scroll through those and it has a traffic light system of reds amber and green um, also features within this, within this app are the lunar setting so tonight we can see there's only two percent uh, which is really great and, and a good time to image. 
sadly it's all red so it's not going to be any good for us tonight uh, over in Kielder. Sadly we're nowhere near there but it would be great to image over there. And what I really like about this app is it splits the total cloud cover into low cloud, medium cloud and high cloud. And I sometimes find that with a bit of high cloud, you can actually get away with imaging for the night. If that's down to, say, 10, 20 percent, you're, you're still good to go for a night of imaging. It also other features it's got, it's got the visibility for the night. It's obviously got rain and the chance of rain. And uh, down at the bottom, it's got an indication of humidity. And I think anything above 90 percent and you're starting to get a fairly dewy night. Uh, from experience, I found that anything over 95 percent, uh, your equipment's going to be absolutely dripping wet. So it's probably not safe to image probably can get away with 90 to 95 percent on most nights so it's a really great app it's full of details and that's our first app so that is clear outside the second app that we're going to look at is the app called scope nights and it's definitely the most visually appealing of all the apps when you go into it it, it looks nice it's very sort of iOS, Apple feel, you know, that sort of lovely interface that you get. Um, what I like about this app is it's just very quick to load up and very quickly see what you're doing. So the last app loads more detail than this one, but this one, if you want just a quick snapshot, it will give you it. What's helpful with this app is you can go to your scope sites and you can add places. So if you wanted to switch from one area to another, you can actually click on that and it will go straight to that, that site. It does have an issue with being slightly buggy at times. And in recent years, I think there's been a few more bugs in it, but it does work well overall. What's really fantastic about this app and where it wins out is in the settings app because you can customize what a good night would look like. So you can see in this section of the app that I can set the maximum wind speed as an example. So if I'm really stern about that or um, very low in my expectations, I can set that right down here to maybe five mile an hour, uh, and it'll go all the way up to 50 mile an hour. Wouldn't suggest anyone images in those kinds of wind speeds, uh, but typically I keep mine about halfway, 25 miles an hour. So when you're going back to the main interface of this and you go back to the red, amber, green settings, it will automatically identify the settings that you've set. And if you set that wind speed to something low like five miles an hour, it will color code the night red if it's above that. So that's quite nice. You're also able to go in on a specific day and get a few more details in three hour increments and it will give you the cloud cover, the humidity, the chance of precipitation or rain. And again, a bit like the other app, it will show you when the sun rises and sets. There isn't quite as much detail and I do sometimes find that this app can be a little bit inaccurate at times. I've lost a few clear nights because it said it's not going to be a good night and then it ends up being a good night. But most of the time it does a really good job and particularly in the sense of giving you a quick, quick snapshot of what the night is going to be. So this is often one of the apps I check first. The third app is an app called Ventu Sky. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it is quite pricey. It's £15 on the App Store, but there is a desktop version and I actually prefer using that because you get more screen estate to see what is actually going on. Um, I have to say this is the most accurate weather forecast out there. I've been using this for five years and never once has it got the forecast wrong. There's absolutely bundles of features in it and uh, it's got a nice presentation and visual styling on it. You can zoom in and out of the areas that you're looking at. It's got all of the same kinds of details that the, the other apps have got. Maybe not astronomy specific, but what it does have, it has things like air quality and you can really dig into all of that and see what the P2.5 or the, the particulate matter in the air is, 
so you can get a real sense of what the air quality is like for the night. I really like moving through the time zones on this app and you can get a real sense of where the cloud cover is coming from and what direction over time. So that's a really useful feature. It's a little bit more interactive than the other apps. But as I've said, this one really, really wins out for accuracy. The final app that I use is one that gives a huge amount of peace of mind. It's less detailed than the other apps. It doesn't need to be that level of detail, but it's one called Rain Alarm Pro. Now, the last look in the App Store, it is $5.99. It's a one-off cost, but it gives so much peace of mind. Um, you can see visually where the rain is coming across, and this will give you an alert on your phone or your Apple Watch or uh, other devices you can set this up so it will be quite loud and I think there's a variety of sounds that you can set that will uh, wake you up if you're asleep and uh, there's the potential of rain and the forecast said it was clear or uh, maybe you you just want you are awake but you just want that peace of mind of uh, what is what rain and forecast is coming into your region and this will show you what you need to know in the settings again there are features in there such as being able to set the background map. Uh, I tend to have it in standard, but you, you can if you're one of these people that looks, likes to look at the hybrid or the satellite. That's in there. But it's really in the alarms where this shines and you can even set it to alert you on certain days of the week or certain times. You can uh, set the search radius in here so that you're able to narrow that search radius down or or widen it if you're if you're concerned about which direction the rain is coming from there's the precipitation sensitivity i always have this set to high it better safe than sorry and uh, you can you can look at the intensity as well from here and set it from uh, all intensities or maybe just if it's light rain and it's maybe a tiny bit of drizzle you might set that down to maybe from 70% Personally, I wouldn't recommend it. I've got mine set to all just because this is a peace of mind app. But it is really good and it has, a, it has worked once or twice for me where it's alerted me. I've been asleep. I've been able to dash outside and get things undercover before trouble comes. And finally, it pains me greatly to give the complete loser of a weather app award to the BBC weather app. It has been wrong at least 50% of the time over the years that I've been doing astronomy. But I'm not quite sure what's happened to the BBC and their weather over the years. I know they get their weather from the Met Office and you could have set your clock by it when I was a child, but something's gone very badly wrong in recent years. My name's Martin and this is Adventures in Astronomy. Hope to see you next time. Have a great week.